Hey gang, this is Deke McClelland. Welcome to Deke's Techniques. This week, I'll show you an alternate method for converting an RGB image to CMYK that retains the original luminance data because what we're doing is we're turning the red channel into the cyan channel and the green channel into the magenta channel and the blue channel into the yellow channel via a special mode known as multi-channel. Now, just so we're on the same page, I want to make sure that you understand that you only convert to CMYK when you're commercially reproducing an image. That is, you're sending it out to a commercial print house. If you're printing it locally to your inkjet or laser printer in your home or office, then you leave it in RGB because those print drivers expect RGB images. If you convert to CMYK, you'll just mess things up. So with that in mind, assuming that we're all commercially reproducing our images, here's an alternate method for converting an RGB image to CMYK that retains the original luminance data. We're going to start things off inside this vividly colored RGB image, and I'll show you what happens when you perform a standard CMYK conversion. Converting to CMYK is the single most destructive modification you can make to an image inside Photoshop. And that's because the color spaces are just entirely different. So rather than convert your original image, in which case you run the risk of saving over it, which would be a crying shame, you want to go up to the image menu and choose the duplicate command. And then let's just go ahead and call this guy standard CMYK because that's what it'll be. And I'll click OK in order to create this duplicate file. Then you want to go up to the edit menu and choose the color settings command, which also has a keyboard shortcut of control shift K or command shift K on the Mac. And inside this dialog box here, assuming that you're working in the States, change the settings from North America general purpose two to North America pre-press two. If you're working in another country with a localized version of Photoshop, then select something equivalent. But what we need is for the RGB space to be Adobe RGB 1998 and for CMYK to be some default. In the States, it's US web coded swap V2, which is just fine. Then turn off these pesky checkboxes down here. They'll cause you no end of grief if you leave them on. All three of them need to be off and then click OK. Now you want to go up to the image menu, choose mode and choose CMYK color. And if you're working along with me, you'll get two warnings. First of all, Photoshop will ask you if you want to flatten the image. That is, get rid of the independent layers, which you have to do if your image contains adjustment layers, because otherwise it won't function properly. So if you have adjustment layers, before you choose the CMYK command, you want to go ahead and merge them into the pixel base layers. In my case, I don't have any specialty layers that are going to cause me problems. So I'll go ahead and click on the Don't Flatten button. Next, Photoshop will tell you that there's another way to work. If you want to convert to a specific CMYK space, then you want to choose the Convert to Profile command from the Edit menu. In our case, that's not an issue, so just go ahead and click OK. And did you see what just happened? Well, go ahead and press Control z or Command c on a Mac. Keep an eye on the contents of the image window. This is the original RGB image, bright, vibrant, stunning. I'll go ahead and press Control z or Command z again to switch back to the CMYK version of the image, which is much dimmer and sort of murkier and definitely not as vivid throughout. And most troubling, these color swatches are totally messed up. I'll show you what I mean. I'll go ahead and switch back to the bright, vibrant RGB image. And I'll select the eyedropper tool, which you can get by pressing the I key. And then bring up your color panel and make sure that your RGB sliders are visible. And now let's go ahead and click in these bottom swatches because they're the most indicative. If I click in the last one here, the magenta swatch, notice that this is true RGB magenta. That is the red and the blue values are maxed out to 255. The green value is set to just zero. So there's no green in there whatsoever because after all green and magenta are complementary colors. So you don't want any green in your magenta. Now I'll go ahead and click on this violet swatch right there. And you can see that we've got half red. So 128 R, no green whatsoever. And blue is maxed out to 255. And that's about the brightest violet you're going to get. Now I'll click on the blue swatch and you can see that's pure blue, no red, no green, just 255 blue. That's it. And then finally I'll click on cyan and you'll note that we've got R zero and green and blue both maxed out to 255. Compare that to what happened to the CMYK conversion. I'll go ahead and click on it. We need to switch from the RGB sliders to the CMYK sliders. And now I'll click inside the magenta swatch. The magenta value should be cranked up to hundred percent 
because that's CMYK magenta for you. But instead, we've only got 80% magenta and we've got 11% cyan. If I click inside the violet swatch, we've just got a mess. We should have a much higher magenta value. Now click inside blue, and that should be 100% cyan plus 100% magenta. It's not, so we have a low saturation blue instead. And then finally, cyan, that should just be cyan ink, right? But if I click inside it, you can see that that's not what we have. We have 87% cyan, so pretty high, but then we've got 20% yellow. Where'd that come from? What we want, I'll go ahead and switch to the final version of the file that we'll be creating, is these colors right here, which are as saturated as they get. If I click in magenta, sure enough, it's 100% magenta. Nothing else in there. If I click on the purple swatch, it's 100% magenta plus 50% cyan. Precise values at work here. If I click inside blue, sure enough, I've got 100% cyan plus 100% magenta without anything else. And if I click inside cyan, just 100% cyan ink, no other impurities whatsoever where the magenta, yellow, and black values are concerned. The thing to bear in mind is that we will see different colors. So this is the original RGB image, and this is the final version of the image that we'll be creating using the multi-channel approach. So you are getting a different effect, but that's inevitable in the world of CMYK. In any case, how do we go about getting this? Well, you want to switch back to your RGB colors image. You do need to have a CMYK version of the image handy, by the way. So make sure you've got it. Then switch back to the RGB image. Go back to the image menu and choose duplicate once again. And I'll call this guy multi-channel approach, let's say. And then I'll click OK. Go ahead and zoom in. And I'll go up to the image menu, choose mode, and choose multi-channel. Now, multi-channel is a weird mode that just basically breaks the channels up from each other. And let me escape out for a moment and switch from the Layers panel to the Channels panel. So you can see that we've got this RGB image, and then we've got the red, green, and blue channels, and then we've got an extra alpha channel as well. Well, we don't need the alpha channel, so you can go ahead and grab that guy and throw it away. In fact, you need to do so. Then return to the Image menu, choose Mode, and choose Multi-Channel. And what this is going to do is just split up the channels into a document that does not have a composite image. So we won't see an RGB image anymore. We'll just see independent channels, and they'll get new names. Also notice this alert message, flatten layers. There is no don't flatten. It's just OK or cancel. So if you want to move forward, you have to flatten your image. Click OK to do so. And you'll end up with this thing that doesn't look the least bit right. And not only that, we've got a cyan channel, we've got a magenta channel, and a yellow. But they're the exact same channels we had a moment ago. So the red channel just became its color complement, cyan, and the green channel became its complement, magenta, and the blue channel became its complement, yellow. Next, what you want to do is add a new channel by clicking on this little page icon at the bottom of the channels panel. That'll create a new alpha channel filled with black. It needs, however, to be filled with white. So just go ahead and press the D key to establish the default colors. White is now the foreground color because we're working inside an alpha channel. So press Alt Backspace or Option Delete on the Mac in order to fill that channel with white. Now the reason we just created this channel is because it's going to serve as our black channel. So we've got cyan, magenta, yellow, and this channel alpha one that will become black. As soon as you go up to the image menu, choose mode and choose CMYK color. And you're going to get that alert message about how you can specify a space using the convert to profile command. Just go ahead and click OK and you'll end up with this effect right there. Now, it might not be everything you hoped it would be. However, let's start with the good news, even though it looks pretty washed out. We've got great color swatches. Check it out. If I click in the magenta swatch, it's 100% magenta, and the CYK values are all zero. And if I click inside cyan, the other values are zero. So no color impurities whatsoever. I'm not going to go through the other swatches, but believe me, it's the same story. If I click inside yellow, 100% yellow. If I click inside red, we've got 100% magenta plus 100% yellow. Everything's exactly the way it ought to be. The problem is the image is washed out. We want it to look like this. And so here's what you do. I'll go ahead and switch back to the standard CMYK conversion because now we need it in order to retrieve the contents of that black channel. So go ahead and click on the black channel here inside the channels panel. And then press control A in order to select the entire image. And I'll zoom out a little bit so you can see the marquee around the entire image here. And then go up to the edit menu and choose copy merged, where you can press control shift C, command shift C on the Mac. 
in order to copy the contents of that channel across all of the layers. Now switch to your multi-channel image in progress, click on its black channel, and just press Control v or Command-V on the Mac, which is the standard keyboard shortcut for the paste command, and then return to the CMYK composite, and you can see that's made a big difference. So this is without that black channel. This is the image with that channel. Notice it doesn't harm any of the color swatches at all. You may want to increase the saturation of the colors all the way around because after all, the original RGB image was highly saturated. And to do that, go to the Layers panel and then drop down to the little black-white circle icon at the bottom of the panel, click on it, and notice that the Vibrance command is dimmed because it doesn't work in CMYK. So instead, we'll use the standard Hue Saturation command. This is going to sound like a radical thing to do, but you can totally get away with it. Go ahead and take that saturation value and crank it all the way to 100%. Now, it may look like we've got a few problems here, a few harsh transitions. And to get rid of those, just go ahead and return to the Layers panel and change the Blend Mode from Normal to Color. And notice now that those colors will drop back into place. And now you can make a decision about whether you want to reduce the saturation value, in which case you double-click on the Layer thumbnail here and take that value down to 80%, for example, and then hide the Properties panel. And we end up with this effect here. Now, granted, it is not in any way, shape, or form identical to the original RGB image. We're just not going to get these colors in the CMYK space. But it is a very interesting effect, as you can see here, that we're able to achieve by converting the image from RGB to CMYK via the multi-channel mode. All right, so what I just got done showing you is very interesting, but it's also exceedingly dangerous. And that's because we've got way too much ink in the shadows. We've got tons of cyan, magenta, yellow, and black mixing together. We're violating the printer's total ink limit, which means those shadows are going to smear on the page. Which is why, if you're a member of the lynda.com online training library, I have a follow-up movie in which I show you how to take those shadows and tone them down to make them printer safe. If you're waiting for next week's free movie, I'll show you how to take these jumping silhouettes and add these bright golden motion trails, or whatever they are. Deke's Techniques, each and every week. Keep watching.